In this video, I'm going to show you how I prep my trails for smoke simulations in Houdini. This is part one of three for setting up your own custom trails. Specifically, we'll look at prepping our missiles with unique names, setting up attributes for particle simulation, and then using that particle simulation to get a custom trail for each missile. Let's dive right in. All right, now starting off for the course, what we're gonna do is grab a file node and load in our missiles enter OBJ file. After that, we're gonna start by analyzing the groups in here. We see we have some missile groups. So I'm gonna drop down a split node and I'm gonna separate the turret from the missiles. And then I'm gonna drop down some null objects in order to reference the missiles and the turrets separately later in the project so we can just easily access them or update them later. And then I'm gonna do some housekeeping by closing up some of these pane tabs and making it so I can have more screen real estate. You don't have to do this, but I think it's really good to set up this way. Then we're gonna dive outside here and I'm gonna drop down a, another geometry node. We're gonna call this Animate Missiles. And what we're gonna do is now import from our prep node where we split out the turret and the missiles, we're gonna get our missile geometry. And it's nice to always think of Houdini like a file directory structure system. So we're just referencing another file essentially located somewhere else. In this case, our missiles object. So we've grabbed that and now we can start prepping these missiles so they can be animated. So I'm gonna drop down an attribute create node and I'll make sure the name of the attribute is called name. And then we need to change the class type to primitive to make sure it's a primitive attribute. And then with my groups, I can grab missile zero, name it missile zero, and then I'm gonna change the type to a string. And something that's really cool here in the string parameter, I can type backtick, dollar sign OS backtick, and then it will grab the title or the name of my node and then just call the attribute that. So looking back here at our attributes, it looks like our name attribute was only one unique and there should be four. So if we analyze our data here in the geometry spreadsheet, we'll find that my issue was that I was calling the group by missile zero because each missile has a group name. So what I could do is just do the same thing, backtick, dollar sign, OS, so then it takes in that same group name. So now we've been able to accurately create four unique, unique name attributes for each missile, which will come in handy now. So now I'm gonna drop down what's called an assemble node, and this node can take in um, our geometry, in this case four missiles, and I'm gonna pack it. And since I'm not creating a name attribute, it transfers the primitive name attribute into the assemble node and it treats them as if each missile was one individual point at its centroid. And to illustrate this further, I can drop down an add node, which will just get rid of the geometry but keep the points if I check it up here. And that'll show that our missiles are represented as a single packed point and those packed points still have the name attributes for each missile. So then when we simulate the points, they will preserve the name attribute, which will come in handy later. So then we can take these points, pipe them into a particle simulation, and then after we've done our simulation, we'll have a good trajectory for our missiles to animate on. Now before I do that, what I want to do is change my playback frame range from 1001 to maybe, let's say, 1150. And the reason I want to do that is because when you deal with a lot of different simulations, a lot of times you want to have some pre-roll. And so if we start at 1001, it gives us an opportunity to have pre-roll or pre-simulated events um, in the event that we need that. So now that we have our points coming into this pop simulation, it was a pop net that I dropped down here. Had a little error there. Oh, it's because our uh, simulation here needs to start at frame 1001. So let's dive into this pop net and we see that nothing's going on here. So as we dive in, 
we can see that we have this input. We want to switch it to all points. And we see that our points are coming in, but nothing's happening. And that's because we haven't had anything to act on these points. So let's drop down a gravity force. And then we see that the points fall continuously and they fall every single frame at the exact same speed. So now let's merge in a ground plane so then we can have some proper collision. We want to make sure that ground plane is set to the first input or um, let's see here. Oh, we had put our output on the ground plane. We want to make sure that this ground plane is either set to the first input or mutual so they uh, are affected properly. And now we see that our points are indeed colliding with the ground plane. So great, we've now set up a basic pop simulation. Let's change our ground plane parameters where uh, the bounce should be at zero and the bounce forward should be at zero. That way when our points collide with the ground plane, we won't get any bouncing because we don't need any bouncing for these missiles at this point. And now if we go to our pop source, what we want to go is to the birth tab and we want to change the impulse activation to only when the simulation starts. So if we type in dollar sign SF is equal to one, and that's two equals, it'll basically make it so once that simulation frame hits one or 1001, because that's what we specified, then it will simulate. Now coming out here, we see that our points are coming out of our simulation, but also our ground plane. And that's because the object merge coming out of DOPS is taking the ground plane geometry. So I typed in star pop star in order to just get our pop object, which are these points that we're simulating. So that way we're able to pull out the points that we're simulating. So now that we've got all that out of the way, let's focus on making our simulation. Now, one thing that we have to take into account is that our missiles need to fire the direction that they are pointing. So in order to do this, we need to create a direction attribute in order to accomplish this task. So I'm going to delete a point on my missile that could be where the thrust is coming from. So if I select this point here and my selector is not working right now. Sometimes it gets a little finicky, so you have to try again. There we go. Okay, so I'm selecting the top point there. Got to deselect that problematic point. Selecting the bottom and top. There we go. Now, with these two points, I'm going to specify a direction that the missiles are supposed to point because then I can fire the missiles based on that direction attribute. So I'm going to drop down a point wrangle. Uh, I dropped down a primitive wrangle. That'll work. Um, we're just going to operate on the primitive. So we'll call this set direction. And I want to go to our blast node. And so if we toggle on just our point numbers here, we can see these tiny zero and one. We want to reference those. So I'm going to type down vector pose a position a is equal to our point and we want to get the third input, so 0, 1, 2, 3. We want to get the third input. And we want to get the position attribute, which is called P in Houdini. So we see that. We've got the position. And now comma 0. So we're getting point 0 right there. And that will be our position A. So we can just copy it and then get point 1. And we'll call that position B. Now next in our code, what I want to do is I want to normalize these two vectors. So I'm going to take position A and subtract it by position B, which will then give us the direction in which they're pointing. And if I normalize it, I can then set it to our velocity vector, which in Houdini is V at V. So now that should be transferred over and it's a primitive attribute set as V. And if I click here, it'll toggle on a visualizer. So now we have our direction specified here as our V attribute. And then in our assemble node, we can make sure that we transfer that attribute V. And it comes over as a primitive attribute. V is like always a point attribute, so I probably should have just set that. So I'll drop down an attribute promote 
and change it from a primitive attribute to a point attribute. So now let's set on our points as a V velocity attribute. So now these missiles or these points can point this direction and shoot this direction in our simulation. And in our Houdini viewport, we actually have a, if I toggle off the visualizer there, we actually have a visualizer that just shows us our velocity vectors. So now let's simulate this. We see that our points just go plop they're only going at a normalized speed of one because we had normalized that velocity vector. But everything's working, we've got things set up. Now we can change our play bar from 1001 to 1050. And then we can just dive inside our DOP network and let's go over to the pop source and change our inherent velocity to 20. Now we see that those points are really cooking we see that it's shooting them far and it's creating this natural arc and it's all shooting from the direction from the missiles. Great. So next we can just specify an simmed points null object and then a starter points null object and then we're going to drop down a null object for our packed geo here. And we're going to do this because what we want to do is using the name attribute that's on all of these points, missile 0, missile 1, missile 2, missile 3, we can now transform them with the transform pieces node. So you remember that at the beginning of this lesson I said that that name attribute would come in handy later this is where it's coming in handy. So we'll plug in the pack geo and by the name we can then plug in the other inputs and then we see that our missiles are now translating in the same way that those points were. So this is an easy way to animate a lot of objects all at once. Now we're having one issue. When the missiles come down and they hit the ground they don't exactly hit in the way that they should or at least their trajectory that they were hitting the ground they kind of snap back and that's because in Houdini it's right now using the velocity attribute as a direction but when they hit the ground they have no velocity therefore they have no direction and so what we want to do is in here in the pop solver we can enable the response for the collision to be stopped and when we do that it's going to give us an attribute, if we middle mouse click here, called stopped. It basically will specify, hey, once you collide with your collider, just indicate that by an integer value of one. So we see that all four of those missile points were stopped because they were turned to one. So we can leverage this by dropping down a pop wrangle. And basically what we're gonna do is grab the end velocity in order to maintain that trajectory. So let's say if my integer at stopped is equal to zero, then what I'm gonna do is just say my end velocity is now equal to velocity. That way, once it stops, we will get the correct end velocity. So then when we come out here, we can drop down a point wrangle and we can just set our current velocity to end velocity because once it stops, then it will be set in the proper direction. So now when we re-simulate, we'll see that our missiles come down and they hit the ground at the same angle in which they were traveling. Okay, let's tidy things up, drop down a null object, set it to out, because we're gonna reference this later. And now we see that our geometry are packed geometries. So let's grab an unpack node, unpack them, transfer the name, and transfer the velocity. So we have these animated missiles that now have a velocity attribute. We see that we have a primitive attribute that's equal to name. Let's just get rid of that. So we'll drop down an attribute delete and then we are going to actually delete the point name attribute so now we'll just have our primitive name attribute 
and now we're good to go. My next video that I release will be part two of part three of showing you how to create this smoke trail trajectory. And if you're interested in the full course, go over to parameter three and you can catch it all there.